All right, folks, just a quick one today. I want to take you through this awesome photo book from Spike Jones himself, A Day on the Set of Babylon. And I can't see you show what you call. Dog times. <laughs> Now this is really rad. I am a huge fan of Spike Jones, obviously because of my history with skateboarding. You know, he did get his start filming some of the most iconic skate videos of all time, like girl and chocolate videos. A lot of people were unaware that Spike Jones is actually a cast member of Babylon. The funny thing is, is on IMDb, it says he's uncredited, which means they left his name out of the actual credits, but he actually was like the crazy, I believe he was playing a German director or something. He was like the crazy director of all of the battle scenes. Now ruining my movie. I was on camera in five minutes. Oh, no, please, please, Jack's arrived. Now, how did I come by this book? Well, last year I was on the SAG voting committee. Uh, so, you know, every year they have the Screen Actors Guild Awards. I've been a member of SAG since 2011. They always send out gifts and stuff if you're on the voting committee. And this was one of the gifts. And as small as a gift as this is, as you guys know, I'm obsessed with uh, all things image making. So I was super stoked on this. But to know that it was from Spike Jones's camera, I got even more excited about. And so I thought this would be a fun one to look through. This is not a lot. This isn't like a very thick book. I I think the joy of it is like we have a really iconic director, you know, if you don't know, Spike Jones directed Her, for example, which is one of his biggest films. Uh, I'm a big fan of Where the Wild Things Are. He's directed a lot of cool stuff and to see like a director on the set as an actor playing a director, right? So he's playing a director in the movie Babylon. This is all of his behind the scenes of him as a director playing a director in another big movie. <laughs> you know, so I mean, it's kind of uh, almost very meta. But let's get in here because I, first of all, I love the cover shot. You know, this is iconic. And do keep in mind, all of these photos were taken by Spike Jones, but there is like one or two where he's in the picture. So obviously he handed the camera off to someone else. But let's dive in here right away and get to it. So yeah, he opens up with a nice little introduction. This is kind of cool. It just kind of talks about him being there on set with the 800 extras and all of this stuff. Stuff. Here's the first one. This is clearly a shot on the hill as all of these photos are and I believe that's Jean Smart in there under the umbrella and Damien Chazelle next to her to our right. That's the cinematographer there, Lina Sangren with the, uh, I believe that's him with the bucket hat on there. Yeah, so that's kind of a nice soft way to start it out. It's very kind of like sepia tone that these photos have. Here's an iconic one. It's Brad Pitt and the actress on the hill here with the 800 extras behind them. This is one of the few color photos here. Uh, the sun just going down over the hills there. This was up in Simi Valley where they shot this. Pretty intense, pretty hot day I would imagine out there. Here's a great shot. <laughs> one of the, I don't know who that is with a flag in their chest. I, I can't even remember the film. I mean, honestly, the film, didn't do very well. <laughs> I think I think it's gonna go in the world records for like losing the most amount of money. <laughs> like I think like their budget was over 110 million and they only made like 3 million opening weekend. <laughs> so it's not too good. I, I don't know why I mentioned that, but I think I mentioned it because I, I, the movie wasn't very memorable to me. <laughs> like it just, I, I think like it felt like two separate movies. Uh, I don't wanna do any spoilers if you haven't seen it. It just felt like it, it was kind of all over the place for me and, and a little chaotic, but I think that was the point of it. Like it was trying to be like super chaotic. I won't say too much about it. You know, I don't want to hurt too many people's feelings. I'm, I mean, it's worth the watch one time, I suppose. The only kind of beef that my wife and I had with it is is like, why did we focus so much on Brad Pitt's character? <laughs> like, like Brad Pitt isn't even supposed to be like the main role, but obviously he's in it so much because he's the executive producer. So I don't think a lot of people realize how many films Brad Pitt actually is behind as the producer under his plan B entertainment company. Like he produces a crap ton of movies. And, you know, I think maybe he was shelling out a lot of that 110 million on this film because his character is in this film so much and so much of his scenes is pretty unnecessary to be honest. So I was like, why the hell? This movie is like Brad Pitt's not even the lead character. Like, why is he in it so much? But I just thought that was funny. But at least in this book, here's an iconic shot of Spike and Brad Pitt uh, standing there. So now maybe you'll recall Spike's character. Like he looks crazy in this movie. And now here's another shot with our cinematographer Linus next to the actor who 
was supposed to be the lead male actor, <laughs> but for some reason, Brad Pitt's character got more screen time than this guy. It was a little ridiculous if you ask me, but uh, I want us to take note of that 12 by 12 ultra bounce behind them there. So uh, if you've watched any of my more recent breakdowns, I talk about how the 12 by 12 ultra bounce is my main workhorse as well on day exteriors. Here's an interesting shot of Brad Pitt, and I believe that is Damien Chazelle behind him there. And you'll notice those 800 extras back there on the hill. And here's a great shot of the orchestra. So they did have like a live orchestra there. I mean, it's a pretty insane movie. I think a lot of the budget went to the production design and the wardrobes and those 800 extras. You know, you gotta imagine 800 extras and they all gotta have this period piece wardrobe. It's just pure insanity. Here by far is my favorite shot of the entire book. I absolutely love this shot. This is so, so good for so many reasons. You know, I love like this, this is like the perfect behind the scenes that uh, that a director would take uh, working on another director's movie. You know what I mean? Like it's so badass. And like he caught them guys handing that camera off, perfect timing uh, with the big crane. So they did shoot this movie on film actually. So I think that's where a lot of the budget went to as well. Um, so yeah, they got the airy flex there on the crane and just badass shot, man. And here's just a little shot of Margot Robbie and a couple of the actors just doing what actors do, uh, just sitting around on set. <laughs> um, here's, here's a, I can't really tell who's in this one. Yeah, I think that's the main actor there with the umbrella and probably just some of the crew standing around him. Here's a shot that Spike took of the 800 extras that he mentions in the introduction. Uh, just pretty gnarly, man, pretty wild, uh, all those extras. And just the props, I mean, you gotta imagine. And then if you see the movie, there's like elephants in it. I don't know if the elephants are real, but I would imagine at least one of them is. <laughs> you know, just how crazy this the production is. Here's kind of an interesting solemn shot of our lead actor there and the old timey car in the background. Here's an excellent shot of our DP Linus with uh, Damien Chazelle in the foreground. And then in the back here, I believe this actress, I believe that's Jean Smart. I really hope I'm right about that. Um, and then obviously the ultra bounce. I mean, think about this now, like think about who took this photo, Spike Jones, right? Like insanely influential award-winning director, you know, and just look at this little behind the scenes shot. He's just snapping away and just, it has all the elements of a quote unquote, excellent photograph, right? Like you have the layers from Damien being in the foreground to our DP being in the middle ground and then our, our actual set in the background. And then it even goes beyond that with more crew holding umbrellas, people that are off camera. It's just, this is a rad shot, all things considered. I mean, even have the leading lines with the dolly track. I mean, it's got like so many, and it's just like a simple little, uh, for Spike, it was probably just like a, a quick happy snap, you know, and he's just, you know, and I mean, the guy's no joke, you know. Um, here's here's another great one that he took too of the orchestra and 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 the band leader there with the with the golden hour behind them the back the back sunlight. Here's a cool one too. I believe again with uh, Gene Smart and Damien Chazelle up there on the hill. Boy, I hope I'm right about this. I, I'm almost positive that was Gene Smart. Probably shoot myself in the foot. Here's another one of my favorite photos of the book. This is this is rad too. Another instance where Spike handed the camera off because that is Spike there in all white with the horses. Uh, well, with the horse playing dead, I suppose. I mean, imagine too, I mean, that's more money there, like having horses with horse wranglers and old ass cannons in the background and just 800 extras going at it back there. It's just, uh, man, it's crazy. You know, it's movies like this that, you know, make you see like, oh, now I see why the AMPTP is wanting to like steal all the extras likeness and just keep using it forever so they don't have to keep hiring 800 extras for crazy movies like this, you know. Uh, th that was one of the problems w why the actors went on strike because um, I heard a crazy story of these uh, background actors that were working on a commercial and then when they had a bunch of downtime, they loaded them up on a bus and took them to a room and 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 they filed them in this room one at a time and they took like 360 degree photographs of these background actors and never told them what it was for and then later they found out it, they basically stole their likeness that day you know to, you know taking 360 degree photos of them and now they have it forever so that's where this whole strike i mean that's one of the big reasons why uh, the strike happened is because you know the but it goes beyond just the background actors too you know like they've been doing deep fakes uh, in the Star Wars movies and stuff, you know, so there's been a lot of weird stuff going on with the AI and everything. 
But I digress. Here's another great one of the boys right before they get on the, the, the cast van there, the production van. This guy kneeling down is one of my favorite actors from The Handmaid's Tale. I love, I love that show. And uh, here's another great iconic, almost silhouette shot of Brad Pitt here with the sword. And that must have been like just a surreal thing, you know, to see, you know, just someone like Spike Jones acting with Brad Pitt and then taking behind the scenes photos of him. And, you know, for such a young director like Damien Chazelle, I mean, I'm sure he was just in, you know, he was just living the dream. <laughs> and here we go with this. This is an awesome spread. Let me see if I can hold it straight. Uh, yeah, this is just rad. So he basically just took a panorama out there. I would imagine probably Spike had a, a Leica with him. I don't know if he shot these on. I would ima I would. Uh, I would guess he was shooting on on a Leica film camera, but I could be wrong. You know, y you never know. But even if it's digital, I, I don't know. It would be interesting to know like what camera he was using. You know. But yeah. So this is just an iconic, crazy um, spread, and you just get to see like the scope of what was going on out there. And that's just. This is just the eight days that Spike Jones was on set, right? So this is crazy. Unfortunately, even though they got nominated for quite a few things for the SAG Awards, they did not win any SAG Awards. They did not win any Oscars, um, sadly. Uh, I think the biggest, I mean, they did win a lot of awards from like a lot of other places, uh, but you know, nothing, I think the only like big award they got, I think they got a BAFTA award for production design. And then they also won a Golden Globe Award for, I believe, the music. Anyways, that's a quick one. I hope you all enjoyed this. Uh, I just loved this little book when I got it. Um, got this sometime last year. Obviously, you know, this is from last year's award ceremony, obviously. The SAG Awards took place back in February of this year, I believe. Uh, but, I, you know, I've had this sit on the shelf and I thought, mm, this is kind of interesting. I don't think too many people have this. I don't believe this was ever sold in stores or anything. So, uh, you know, here we talk about all things image making, whether it be street photography or cinematography or lighting or filmmaking. I just thought maybe some people would be interested in this. Okay, before the next helicopter flies over and my brain completely explodes, thank you all for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next one. No, let's just get the fuck out. I'll fucking kill you. We are losing the light. We roll now. We roll. Roll, 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 roll.